Good afternoon. Now to bring the regular afternoon meeting of Township Alignment Council to order. And the first item is the adoption and receipt of the agenda items. Can I have a motion, please? Moved and seconded. Yeah, sure, that's fine. Um, so I did I get a second, uh, Councilor Davis? The agenda, so okay, so I've got, okay, I'm gonna clear the queue and start. Oh no, hang on, it might work. Uh, this is all messed up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna clear the queue and start over again. Okay, Councillor Woodward. Yeah, I just wanna know when it's appropriate to make a motion to um, decline or defer delegation D1 on the evening agenda. Good, good question, Mr. Backen. We can do that now or we can do it uh, in the evening, but now it might be appropriate. It would be. Know. Yeah, that they're not their delegation would not be happy. I agree. We can do that now. Mr. Earlier, Backen. the better your worship, but because yeah. of the circumstances, the stated reasons are usually helpful as well, and I presume it's because of the heaviness of the agenda. Okay, and that it's not time sensitive. Is that correct? Through the summer, it's not time sensitive. Okay, it's not time sensitive, and, and uh, we have a packed agenda um, and a lot of other things people are here for. So, for me, I would uh, suggest that we defer that to the September. Which. Uh, delegation D1 on the evening agenda be deferred to September. Okay, moved. Is there a second? Subject to further consideration. Oh, sorry. That's, that's, um, you're making an amendment to the agenda. Yes. That's moved. The agenda, yeah. And, sec agenda. and second by yeah. Councillor. Uh, I'd Kuntz. like it to specific, maybe deferred to September meeting, subject to further council consideration, something like that. Okay. Yes. It's moved and seconded as an amendment to the Agenda, so I'm just going to call for a show of hands. All those in favor? Opposed? Councillor Long's opposed, and Councillor Ferguson's opposed. That motion carries. Councillor Richter? Uh, yes, uh, the uh, late delegation request for this evening's meeting um, from Judith Brook, who is a resident of North Van. I would like to decline that on the grounds of our uh, excessive agenda, and we already have a Delegation scheduled on the same topic. There's a seconder to that? Yeah. Councillor um, Arneson seconds. Um, any discussion on yes. that? Okay. Councillor Long, do you, want to push your, do you want to push your, do you want to push your next to speak? Thank you. Councillor Long. Sorry, I'm, I don't understand which one we're going to. So, so this is the, there's a late, on table late agenda. Uh, name is uh, Judith Brook. So would this not require a, a two-thirds anyway to have this agenda, or this, is it because we don't have five that this could be accepted? So this is automatically on the agenda unless this motion is made. I understand. Okay. 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 Councillor Richter. Thank you. Uh, no, I no, just okay. want to, I have another item. Okay, so I'm going to call a question on that just by a show of hands. All those in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. Boy, I'm sure that would be the buttons. That's hard on the neck to turn back and forth. Councillor Richter, you're on. Uh, yes, item D1, I'd like to defer that to uh, uh, the September meeting. D1? Uh, or, sorry, not uh, in this, in this agenda. I this agenda, in the afternoon. Yeah, okay, yeah, is there a seconder to that? Okay. Councillor Arneson seconds. I'd like to speak to that one if that's okay. Um, unless you wish to speak first. Uh, well, I, I like to defer it because we have had no minutes. They just came on table, uh, f except for one for this committee. And uh, I just don't understand uh, why this, and we got a, an email at like 8.30 last night. I just don't understand why this is a pressing matter. I think it can wait. Thank you. So as, as chair of the committee, committee or one of the co-chairs of the committee, I'd just like to respond to that. Certainly, I think the reason it is on this uh, meeting, meeting his agenda is because um, their time is of the essence on this one. Dr. Holden um, is a professor at Simon Fraser University and uh, is, um, is a person who, as you've uh, hopefully had a chance to read her, um, her proposal, I believe is independent of council, independent of the development industry, independent of staff. Uh, Dr. Holden is going to be utilizing students uh, in her, um, her class or her programming to assist with this, which is going to... Uh, help save uh, a lot of money to the township. And if we were to hire professional consultants, I think they were well aware they can go more than double what she's proposing. And because, um, you know, we did put a timeline, I wanted to get something back to, um, as uh, the committee does, back to council, with, you know, within a year. Um, and because of the school timeline and getting the students involved, uh, the committee met 
a week earlier. We were supposed to meet this week, but we moved the, uh, the meeting and able to get this to, in front of council. I apologize for the lateness of it, but I was waiting for that report. Um, final report from Dr. Holden, and I sent it out as soon as I could. But I'll certainly honor the uh, wishes of council. Uh, she is on her way out to speak to us at 4 o'clock, but um, certainly um, respect the wishes of council. Uh, Councilor Ferguson? Well, yeah, I think that, yes. Is this the second Yeah. Oh, I thought uh, Councilor Arneson seconded. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yes. Councilor Ferguson? Yes, I yep. think it is time sensitive, and I think that I've talked to other members of council. Some feel that. Uh, you know that we do have an awful lot on agenda I realize that and I appreciate that so hopefully maybe mr. mayor you can keep her comments brief I know you give her you got to give her at least four or five minutes but you know keep her comments brief it's important because it is time sensitive so I will supporting her comments tonight I'm sure that means I have to vote against the actual proposed uh, motion I think thank you just to help I did ask her to keep it to five minutes so yeah there's a motion so it's a motion to do not to to defer this to September so I'll call the question. Um, oh, oh, I didn't see other. Oh, okay, Councilor yeah, Anderson. Sorry, um, I just want to clarify. So she's already anticipating coming now. Yeah. She, so and she's coming from far away, right? She lives in Vancouver. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm going to call the question. Show of hands. It's the agenda. So all those uh, in favor of um, deferring this to September? Opposed? I have Councilor Long, Councilor Arneson, myself, Mayor Frills, Councilor Kunst. Councillor Whitmarsh, Councillor Ferguson, so it's denied. So now we're going back to the uh, agenda as amended. Uh, can I have a mo or I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. Move to the adoption of the minutes. The regular afternoon meeting, July 8th. Um, Councillor Whitmarsh moves it. Second. Uh, Councillor Arneson, any errors or omissions? All those in favor? Oh, Councillor Long. Thank you, Your Worship. On page five, uh, there's an amendment that was defeated unanimously. I can't, uh, that must be, am I reading this wrong? It was a, an amendment on the uh, street names in Fort Langley. Uh, it was defeated unanimously? Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Just clarifying. Okay, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And carries. Thank you. And a motion to resolve into special close for the items on the agenda, the on-table item and a legal item to be added by Mr. Winslade. And okay. Councillor Arneson? Yes, I have a legal item, please, legal? for the close. Okay. Thank you. And Councillor Richter? Yes, I have one, two, three personnel items and one legal. Okay, three personal and one legal. This is Richter. Okay. Okay, with those additions, I did mention the on-table, I hope. Call the question, all those in favor? Opposed and carries. I'll go to closed. Holy crow. All right, good afternoon. Uh, just as our councillors are taking their seats, I will re reconvene the regular afternoon meeting of the Township of Langley Council. Um, and uh, the next item on the agenda is the Township of Langley Mayor Standing Committee on Development Management Process Review. And um, please introduce uh, Dr. Meg Holden, who is here today to give us a brief overview of the work she's proposing to do for the Township of Langley. Uh, Dr. Holden is a professor uh, of, uh, are you going to give us your exact title, because of planning and development at Simon Fraser University, and uh, has... Uh, has spoken to the committee about what uh, she can do and has done some work. I know with the Home Builders Association, which has now changed their name, Havan, uh, and uh, is here just to provide some uh, overview details on her submission that uh, council all received. I know it was late last night. And, uh, and here to answer any questions from council. So welcome here. Dr. Thank Holden. You, Mr. Thank Mayor you. and members of council, thanks for having me. Um, so, as Mayor Froze just said, um, my name is Meg Holden, and I am a, not a career consultant. I'm a professor, and I direct the Urban Studies Graduate Program at Simon Fraser University. We are a professional master's program, and we've graduated now over 150 uh, trained urbanists, um, three of whom now work in professional capacity in the Township of Langley. and. Um, are advancing your work here. Um, we have other graduates who work sort of on the other side of the table that um, I'll refer to here in this, um, with respect to this, this uh, 
program of work um, for developers, for consultants, uh, architects, and others, and everything in between. So, um, the, so that, that's what brings me here today, and I think why I was invited to put forward this proposal is um, partially my position in being uh, able to help to uh, introduce graduate students in urbanism to the important work that cities do in this uh, very particular um, and, uh, and localized uh, piece of work around development approvals. Um, I also so I, I see and I also see that the integrated approach to community planning development services and engineering work in municipalities like Langley as among the most important tools that municipalities have within their power to produce the critical decisions that then shape the the municipal future the townships future so I see what uh, the mayor standing committee on development management process review has proposed here within its terms of reference and its scope of work is important for Langley at this critical juncture particularly as as Langley experiences unprecedented growth rates um, new types of development formats and uh, land uses being proposed and and coming online um, and questions that arise about how those uh, are best stewarded, how they fit within municipal priorities, uh, community planning priorities, uh, and how development and, uh, and growth can be pursued in a way that doesn't threaten quality of life. So what I've proposed in the package um, that is in front of you here is uh, an iterative and an interactive um, program of research. It includes background research. Uh, Mayor Froze mentioned uh, this, this sort of the the industry associations involved with this piece of work. Um, we also intend to look at, uh, in in detail, at what the council what council has done, um, including your uh, your plans that you've passed here, in order to inform our understanding of what the current practice is here. There's no sense um, going into this. I I haven't gathered from the committee that there's some smoking gun or there's something wrong with the way the Township of Langley pursues development approvals. It's it's more a matter of um, providing uh, informed feedback to uh, two applicants in this in this sort of critical period of growth on how they can um, better engage uh, the municipality, how they can improve their experience of the community, learning from council and from staff about um, how the process proceeds um, from a procedural as well as a sort of a political and a cultural uh, perspective as well, um, and then also pointing out areas uh, of information, looking at comparator municipalities that are also experiencing high growth, growth, growth rates, looking at what's happening and the discretion more of, at the provincial and the federal levels as well, um, which are mostly with outside of the jurisdiction of the Township of Langley, but still areas where education and more transparency and information can uh, potentially improve process and practice overall. Um, what else? I, so I am proposing here to, to meet with council as well as with some of the applicants um, uh, in a sort of an iterative process where we'll, we will ask you questions um, and try and find out uh, how the process proceeds, what the experiences have been, how it could be made better. Um, there will be a survey component, and uh, there will also be some data crunching components to this towards producing a report that has recommendations um, and significant sort of educational weight and potential for, um, we hope, for all parties. So I, I hope that you might have some questions for me about this. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a couple. Um you did some work for the Home Builders Association. He just, and, and that sort of is similar to the work, that, although it was uh, more broad, it was over several municipalities and jurisdictions. Just a real brief synopsis of that, because that impressed me and how that okay, can be related sure. to what so we're doing So I here. would just, so with respect, I would just correct you, I didn't work for oh, no, the, sorry. the Haven. Yeah, I, I didn't um, even, even but for them, uh, but yeah, we did, we did engage in a sort of a partnership with uh, the Home Builders Association and the Urban Development Institute from 2013 until 2016. It was a project called Getting to Groundbreaking, and this was uh, a review of the processes in municipal development approvals throughout Metro Vancouver. Um, and so, yes, that absolutely will inform the, the process that I'm proposing here and will inform 
uh, the approach to the, to the work, we were able to come up with a series of best practices. And then um, sort of where we left that project were, was that you know the best practices identified by applicants weren't necessarily the same ones identified by the municipalities within the scope of that larger uh, piece of work looking at 21 different municipalities we didn't have the opportunity to go in and say well how do we reconcile those differences and those gaps but I think that that's something that we could do within the scope of this work. thank you and the other question is um, you're utilizing the students um, yep. Part of their part of their program and learning and you have a semester system and i know we talked about bringing this and i had some questions from members of council and i think they're very legitimate because i thought of the same thing bringing it uh this proposal to this meeting you know the full agenda and, and we're going into summer break but with your programming and getting prepared for the semester um is it important that we make a decision tonight so you can proceed uh, i know it can always be delayed to long you know past uh the deadline that we have i just need to to get an, ex an extension, but I just wanted a little comment on that. Sure. Um, it is ideal because it's um, in the, the lead up to September when students, uh, ha they, they have to figure out how they're going to finance their, their studies. And so for, for many of our students, it's a professional program. They're looking for work opportunities. Um, and so this would be a, a great opportunity to provide some steady, research-oriented employment um, and, uh, and if we do wait until September, then I'm not going to have the full range of uh, possible applicants because the best students will have already chosen uh, a research position. Okay, thank you. Okay, I have some questions from Council. Council Richter. Uh, yeah, I was under the impression that what we were looking at here was going to be how do we streamline our um, development uh, permit process? And so some of the goals and objectives that you've got in your, um, I guess, proposal here leaves me with some questions. Like, for example, um, enriching the healthy and ongoing dialogue about the effects of policies and procedures. Like, why, how does that fit in with the approved terms of reference mm -hmm. for the project? So because um, certainly I, I know that uh, there is an emphasis on efficiency within the terms of reference of the committee. Um, sometimes there are, uh, sometimes the root of efficiency is not necessarily uh, an overly long process, but a misunderstood process. And so um, part of the solution to an efficient process is actually uh, improving the communication flow so that uh, questions are asked in advance um, and that they don't go unasked and unanswered until the 11th hour when they, you know there's a huge crunch there's a huge sort of um, uh, potential for bad feelings and for 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 larger impacts of of uh, of, of, of missed information that could have been more adequately handled uh, in advance Okay. And another goal you've got stated here is a made in Langley public education about development approvals. Again, I'm not seeing that as part of the original terms of reference for the project, so I'm just wondering why that's been included. So I'm putting that on the table as part of what I bring to this process as a, as a, research, uh, as a researcher. Um, it's certainly... Uh, I have found in my past work on this specific topic that this is something that gets quite a bit of media attention, even if it's not high on the public agenda at the outset. Uh, and so I do think that it's something that uh, the committee and potentially council would be interested in getting out in front of in order to uh, have, to, to have a, a clear understanding of what council wants to communicate. Uh, about this about this project um, at the end, like I said, I do see you know this scope of work as a very key and very individualized. There's a huge range of different uh, different practices across the region and and in in both the Fraser Valley and the Metro Vancouver regions. Um, so sort of protecting Langley's right to to define its own process given its own unique circumstance is what I'm trying to get at with that made in Langley approach. Okay, and then under deliverables, you've identified that you're going to survey and, and do follow-up interviews targeting high-volume development applicants and their experiences. What about the smaller applicants? Are they going to be brought into this at all? Because 
often a lot of the complaints we hear are coming from the smaller applicants. Yeah, thank you for that. And actually, I think you might be referring to an earlier version because I was sort of corrected on that uh, at the uh, at the July eight at last week's uh, committee meeting as well. So I did strike that from the from the version that um, should be with it with the. I with just the got here. this version this afternoon. I think this is the maybe it, maybe it didn't get struck. It's oh, I see. That, it, at any rate, um, at any rate, that that point was that not point. supposed to indicate that this is going to only address the high volume applicants. It's um, it's more a question of prioritizing. Um, applicants that are able to compare uh, municipal experiences as well. So typically the larger developers are, are going to be able to say, this is how it works in Surrey. I find that this practice is useful compared to the practice in Langley. This is how it works in Coquitlam, et cetera. So that's the, that's the benefit of having the higher volume applicants. Of course, it's important to get the smaller applicants as well. And so I'll be asking uh, staff and council to help build that sample frame. Okay, and you've got in this version, oh yeah, tip to tail presentation of one to three sample development approval process. I think I might have sent you the wrong one. I apologize, I don't know. Because there was a- The one that you sent to me, that's correct. But, oh. why, but why, would oh, we only, okay. why would we only look at three? Um, it's really, it's a it's scope of work issue. But, but it will be three, so we did go up to three. Um, and so that will be, uh, because that's going to be quite an involved piece of work to actually go through what happened at each piece and step of the process with both the applicant and with uh, staff and council. Um, there's, just not, there's just not the time within the scope of work to do more than that. But we do think we can cover a range of different types of applications and outcomes. And then uh, my last question is with regards to the research assistant who I see you've already selected from this version that I've got, uh, 15 hours weekly for nine months. Why is this going to take nine months? Don't, can't we get like two or three or four research assistants and condense it into three or four months? I doubt it uh, because of my, my experience with the difficulty of pulling together uh, focus groups of busy busy professionals, for example, um, and also obtaining enough time with the different offices within the Township of Langley. I think that it's it's actually probably better for um, trustworthy results to to take our time with a single sort of, with a single researcher. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Arneson. Yes, thank you very much for coming today. Um, I just wanted to ask you a question, if you wouldn't mind clarifying, if you can. Under the goals and objectives, there's a bullet point at the end, and it talks about future-oriented visioning in the township of Langley. Do you have anything that you could use to describe that process as part of the overall exercise? Well, I don't mean that I think that within this scope of work we're going to do any kind of visioning exercise, but I do see this kind of work as input that the committee could then provide to council in order to, to help to sort of clearly articulate what the Township of Langley's culture is around its approach to development applications that... Um, that Langley wants to fit within its official community plan, within its neighborhood concept plans, within it, uh, to how, how Langley uh, works specifically in order to leverage development to meet its community goals. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Ferguson. Oh, I, for the first things first, for arithmetically, um, the two the two reports, there are two different budget numbers. Yeah, there was a, there was a, uh, Councillor Ferguson, there was a draft that uh, after the, um, and I, I apologize if I by accident sent the wrong one out, but the um, committee went through the draft and made recommendations. So the one, um, the final one has the amount that's 24000 and change. And that was uh, after the committee uh, discussed it with uh, Dr. Holden. We've, and I've, my experience is we didn't want to come back, but wanted to make sure that we had an upper limit that we wouldn't have to come back to council to ask for more money so that there was a, a contingency built in. But I, I think uh, Dr. Holden is going to try and keep it within that or below. So, um, so the one version that had the other number was one that we discussed and was corrected. The committee went through it. Just And very similar questions I'm, as I'm hearing tonight. Uh, so. Anyway, that's not why I pushed okay. my button. I just happened to notice that, right? Thank you for coming today, Dr. Holden. I'll bring that to my daughter's attention because she's in the Ph.D. program in the Beattie School of Business at SFU, and I don't want those business people making mistakes. And, and I'm not that saying you made a mistake. It, 
when we look at this particular task force, I mean, there's an overlying goal as what can we do in the township of Langley to, I guess, things make things more efficiently, make 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 uh, applications come forward and and save both the township and I guess applicants and others um, money and also save the community, and uh, you know. T time is money, and, and I guess that business, whenever you talk to those folks who are in that business, they, they want to proceed and they want to be able to find things that slow them down or things that maybe get bog bogged down in the, in the process. And I noticed by reading, you know, you act more academically than anything else, okay. yeah, are you going to see, try to find things and be polite about it, pitfalls or challenges that we can actually fix? And yes. Sometimes... Believe it or not, you know, myself being a retired teacher of 33 years, sometimes in the system there's, there's um, I guess, um, people challenges you can't change, you know. And, and regardless of situation, we have a union here, we have other things. And I, I hope that maybe you'll be able to at least advise us in those areas, if I may. Have you thought about that? Yeah, and I think that's what I was, that was, that's what I was trying to get at in part when I was referring to, when I was responding to Councillor Aronson's question about culture. Um, some, of the, some of the ways in which um, perhaps certain offices have, and this could be either within the applicant pool or within the township, about how they respond to requests, um, how requests are channeled, um, the, the acceptable time in order to respond to requests, uh, what the chain of command is, those kinds of things, yes, I think that we can we can shed some light on those. And that's part of the reason for using specific application examples as well, um, as well as the sort of more more higher level uh, survey responses. Yeah, and thank you very much for coming. I mean, it's just exciting, Mr. Mayor, and I think it's, an, it's exciting. It's exciting for the community, for your students, hopefully, and also I'm looking forward to results. And certainly, if I could be any help, I've been in uh, my, it's my eighth term on council. I've worked on the other side of, of the fence as well. I'd be more than welcome to put my services in kind. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Councilor Woodward. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, yeah, I just had a couple of questions about uh, make sure I'm reading the right version, which I which I apparently am. Um, I mean, I, I don't. This is the first we've heard of it. We only got this yesterday, so I want to apologize a little bit. It just sort of getting up to speed on that for, for those of us that aren't on the committee, not understanding maybe some of the details and some of the discussions that have gone on. So I'm just trying to get up to speed here a little bit. How useful are students really that have never built anything and never applied for anything? How useful are they to you or to this project? To this project, yeah. Um, well, I mean, I'm going to be, I've never, I've never built anything either, um, but I do think that, uh, that there are benefits in being forced to explain what one does to people who are non-experts, right? Because this is, uh, this, the development application process is a process that demands a whole range of different types of expertise, um, and, uh, and all of those parties with those different specific areas of responsibility as specific realms of expertise have to communicate to one another. So, um, I mean, that's, I think, one of the fundamental challenges with this process is making someone else understand what is crucial to you but not crucial to uh, someone else uh, when it comes to selecting landscape design, road width, um, uh, building height or massing or various kinds of things that can um, that can impact the way that a development approval process proceeds. And for the students, I mean, clearly it's going to be beneficial for a student because the student does get this very detailed inside look. Um, whereas, but that's ultimately a benefit to the township of Langley, for example, uh, and other municipalities that are seeking better qualified candidates when you're looking to hire people. Is that the purpose of, okay, I'm just, um, okay, so I just wanted to clarify too then, because um, I think we'll be debating this later. I just want to, I mean, I support a process rather than no process, so I just want to give you, sort of, but you mentioned communication a couple of times, and I, I'm a little concerned, so I just want to confirm, if you're focusing on communication of applicants with an understanding of the township's process, or it's about the township's process. It's about the township's process. So uh, what I'm what I'm thinking is that it will be about the the technical aspects of the township's process. So things like um, how are how are pre-application meetings handled? Who who attends? 
um, technical matters about how uh, complete an application needs to be in order to be received and, uh, and, and read by the township. Um, what is the process for um, correcting errors that are made? Um, are, there, uh, are there particular ways of uh, expediting processes uh, in particular situations. So some of those technical elements of process, some of the different, uh, the different steps, certainly, and the, the ordering of those steps, the concurrency of the process steps. And then um, I think supplemental to that and making, it, m making the results more useful is also a look at the, the process elements, the communication elements, the professional elements, the, the way in which those processes take form because they're handled by particular individuals who behave in particular ways. Okay, I know we're running out of time here, but two, again, um, if it's time sensitive, why not? And I wasn't, the one thing I didn't, I was wondering about too was the timeline. So if it's, you know, so the timeline around May of next year to kind of, you know, why, why not have one meeting with our 10 highest volume developers and consultants and you could report back to us in two weeks? Why not do that? Because in my experience, it takes more than one meeting, uh, particularly if it's a, a group of people, uh, in order to actually get down to the details of what happened. I, with one meeting, with one focus group meeting, uh, there's going to be quite a bit that, say, if this is a group of applicants, want to get off their chest about general things. Um, but then in order to actually do the due diligence of going back to count, uh, going back to staff, understanding what actually might have transpired, because nobody has full information within uh, a complicated process like this. Um, an iterative process is more appropriate to getting more constructive feedback. All right, thanks. Thank you, Council Director. Um, yeah, uh, you see the budget here that's presented here is twenty four thousand six hundred and eighty seven. It's an estimate. But I just want to confirm that whatever you bill will not go over the 24687 Correct. Okay. And um, also you had said earlier in the beginning that you had done work for um, the Home Builders Association, uh, but you will be approaching this uh, project. Um, I know you're not taking compensation. You're providing your services in kind at arm's length. So it's not going to be a Home Builders Association Oriented, absolutely result. not. No, no, okay. it's arm's length. I mean, I, I would be, I would be um, a consultant, I suppose, to the the standing committee, and my research assistant would be a research assistant of Simon Fraser University. Okay. Well, thank you very much for um, for answering the questions and presenting to us. And uh, I'll now um, move on to uh, ask council okay, for thank endorsement. You. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so at this point, um, what I would uh, like is like to move that we receive uh, Dr. Holden's um, presentation, and that um, uh, council approve uh, that the twenty-four thousand six hundred eighty-seven dollars maximum uh, be taken from council contingency to fund this project. And I checked with staff; our council contingency is about one hundred eighteen thousand dollars at this point, so there is room within it. So I would make that motion. And is there a seconder? Council Whitmarsh seconds it. Councilor Richter? I oppose using council contingency to pay for this. Okay, thank you. Any other dis discussion? Councilor Long? Uh, wasn't there an item on the agenda to deal with this, or have you moved it? Or I've you moved it. it, yeah. There, there's no, the item on the agenda was D1, so um, to receive it, and uh, the motion is to receive, and I'm also asking for endorsement. Was there not another agenda item that talked about the, uh, the budget, or that's just, it's only coming up here? It's not, it's not, not on tonight's agenda. Not elsewhere in the agenda that I know of. No. Well, I'm looking at the terms of reference, and I guess it does say that there is a uh, potential budgetary request, which is what I guess we're hearing from you, Your Worship. So, um, but the thing is, when this the committee was formed by the mayor, it wasn't formed by council, it was formed by the mayor, did you not already establish a budget where it would come from? Why would it have to come from? I mean, council contingency fund <clears throat> is for council initiatives. Uh, now, this being a mayor, do you, does the mayor not have his own contingency fund? He won't give me one. So uh, I'll go back on, on some of the history with, uh, and I can use the one uh, from last year, the Mayor's Standing Committee on Public Engagement, and that was funded through Council Contingency. So Council Contingency, um, was, is there precedent for that? Um, certainly, 
uh, I believe it's a, it's, uh, uh, it's an appropriate source of the funding. It's it's in the budget. I've spoken to uh, Mr. Seffi and uh, regarding their capacity to do this, and he says definitely this is on their uh, this is important to them. Um, and uh, he he did suggest the council contingency uh, be the area that we fund this from. So. Uh, based on that, uh, that's why I'm requesting it come from council contingency and, and uh, on, on basically on past practices. And on the question of um, the budget, well, I couldn't come up with a budget until we actually consulted with a consultant to find out what, what it would be. If it came back at $100,000, I think I wouldn't be bringing that forward. But I felt this is fairly reasonable in the fact that we're utilizing uh, students and that uh, Dr. Holden is um, providing her, her assistance in kind that this is a very reasonable um, approach, and I've seen a lot of studies come from a lot of d different, in my work on Metro Vancouver, and I'm sure you too, you know, it seems 50,000 is low when it comes to any any sort of study, so uh, this would probably uh, come a lot, lot higher if we were going to the uh, the public, and, and I do feel that Dr. Holden, uh, being not part of council, part of staff, or part of the industry, will give an unbiased uh, approach and be able to provide us with some good information, so hopefully that answers your question in a long-winded way. It doesn't really, but I mean, it, it, it's rather... Not a good practice to have Dr. Holden here while we're discuss discussing whether we're going to pay her or not, but that's number one. Oh. Number two, um, <laughs> there, is a, there was a, a workshop that council had where we all decided that we would like to have a look at uh, the development processes. Uh, so what has happened to that, Mr. Bakken, or through you to Mr. Bakken? That initiative that was, a, that was a council initiative is now going to be only with this mayor's task force? If I, I'll let Mr. Backen answer if I don't uh, clearly answer it. One thing that's very, very important to me, and it's in, in this, and it's in this proposal, is that uh, council is uh, part of the process. The, the committee is really a steering committee to get this ball rolling. Um, every member of council will have, if they choose, they can choose not to. But certainly, it's important that this um, work here from members of council, and that's part of the uh, the uh, timeline here. And I know we had a discussion about it, but it's in there that council is involved, and it was mentioned in the presentation. So okay, well, we're not eliminating council from this. This is just moving this thing forward. And with all due respect, and to to the consultant too, I don't think all of council do feel part of this work. I certainly don't. Well, uh, Councillor Long, I know you're on Metro Vancouver, and that's Metro Vancouver has a lot of committees that not every member of the board is on, and they respect their colleagues. And I think this is no different. Uh, this is just a steering committee, and it's balanced with members of the public. But I'll take those comments under advisement. Councillor Whitmarsh. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that this is a, uh, you know, a really helpful uh, report from, from Dr. Holden that gives us some really good insight into the approach that's going to be taken. I think it's quite uh, reasonable um, from a financial point of view. And it is a standing committee that uh, is, a, is the mayor's standing committee, but it's certainly all information and any report that comes will come back to council. And this is taking a non-biased look at what we're doing with the development process. And so we could have staff uh, give us a report of what's happening in their, in, in their own uh, area. Uh, we could have a member of council lead it and do that. But I think what's most helpful is to have the non-biased approach where we get some information coming from um, professionals who have worked in this field along with some students who are helping who are going to become professionals in this field who are doing the bulk doing much of the research and uh, mm -hmm. that report will be very significant to us and very helpful and at a rate that's uh, very appropriate so we have all sorts of committees in that that they're all connected to council I don't think uh, that any council member should feel like that they're, they're not part of the process um, it is simply an opportunity for us to get a report from a non-biased uh, professional who will give us input and which will come to council and then we'll have lots of discussions and lots of opportunity to debate the ideas that will come forward. There's no member of council that's being left out of this process. Thank you. Councillor Ferguson. Yeah, no, I, I understand that the concerns expressed over the last little while by some of my colleagues. I inter I've talked to them and I understand. It's just that, you know, one of our strategic prior uh, priorities is uh, number four is the development management process review. And this, I see this as a step in the whole process. And it uh, may be perhaps step one, and it'll be opportunity for council to um, go in other steps. And I'm not every member of council, I understand, is on this committee, nor do they have time. And um, I think it is an exciting step. I know that there's some 
challenges as to perhaps uh, the methodology, uh, nothing to do with uh, Dr. Holden, of how it came about. Um, but uh, I believe this is a step. I believe it's part of, I don't believe, I know it's part of a strategic priority chart. And uh, I think it, it, it's something that we can learn some from and move forward from. And I, I think it's an exciting opportunity. Um, but I don't want to take uh, lightly the fact and the comments of my colleagues uh, uh, of how it's come about. But um, regardless of that, I'm going to support it and move forward. And looking forward to going to more steps, steps in the future to have um, one of the better development management in the region. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Richter. Yeah, uh, well, I'd just like to point out that we're not Metro Vancouver and we don't do work here primarily by chair appointed committees. And I'm not convinced that the Metro system is the best model to follow for all situations. I don't think it is. <clears throat> and I'd like to echo Councillor Long's comments. Um, I don't feel that I have been part of this process. Uh, certainly, the co group as a whole decided on priorities, but I was never asked if I wanted to be on this committee. I was just told who was going to be on the committee. So I think Councillor Long's points are very valid, and I share his concerns. Thank you very much. And um, see no further discussion. Um, just, just remind Council, in my history, we've had three standing committees, the one uh, Councillor Long chaired was on the, the pool back in my first term. And last term we did the, the uh, public engagement committee and this term uh, I've chosen to do this one um, and uh, I feel it's important work. The council will be involved, the council will see the report and, and we can certainly build on it. So I will uh, now call the question. And this is D1. Council Long. The uh, motion carries with uh, Council Richter opposed. Thank you very much. We now move on to delegations, and uh, we have Mr. Rudy Verhoof here. If you please come forward. And thank you, Dr. Holden, for attending. Hi, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. Um, my name is Rudy Verhoof. I live in uh, 23089 Munch Trail. Um, Trail, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a tough start. Um, I'm here representing Red Door Events. We're the production team behind Somerset Music and Arts Festival as well as Torchlight Festival. Red Door Events was born from the very successful Fort Langley Beer and Food Festival, and we are a sister company of Trading Post Brewing. Somerset is a three-day, all-ages music and arts festival featuring world-renowned musical talent, as well as local musicians, artisans, vendors, and locally sourced food and craft beverages. Torchlight is a one-day worship event um, music festival produced in partnership with Trinity Western University. Our owner, Paul Verhoof, and our director, Jonathan Howling, um, wish they would have been here today, um, but unfortunately, they're both currently out of the country. Red Door Events is a new events company whose aim is to create a unique experience and events that will build community and bring people together. We've heard over some years that the broader community has wanted more events and activities in the fort. Our initial research showed that the idea of a family-friendly, community-oriented festival would be an event that could bring our, com our community together. With it, however, we have identified considerations, challenges, and concerns. The issues of parking, sound, and property protection for nearby residents and stakeholders were the most significant. As we started planning, our producer Paul and creative director Rachel and the manager from the Fort Langley National Historic Site visited over 45 resident neighbors um, door to door. I myself visited many local vendors uh, and merchants as well. Most folks were home and those who weren't received a pamphlet explaining the concept to date. The feedback from this was overwhelmingly positive. So our full attention was set on addressing and mitigating parking, noise and protection of surrounding properties. Since then we've made some good progress. The first was to turn the site around and to move the items to ensure speakers and sound directed northeast opposite of the residence. The second was to secure a 10 acre uh, field for parking that will have been harvested just before the event. The field is just east of the fort and will fit over 1,200 cars. If we were to sell out, not only will this lot handle over half of our max car traffic, it will also allow us to channel our patrons back uh, to the lot after the event um, 
during the night without passing through the residences as well as adverting traffic from coming through Fort Langley. We're also working on confirming our shuttle, shuttle program from Carvolth, uh, Colossus, Abbotsford and Trinity Western University. If we, have to reach, uh, if we were able to reach full capacity over, of over 4,000, almost, uh, almost all parking could be alleviated through these measures. Thirdly, we've partnered with an established and experienced event operations company, and we're working with the community uh, policing, a local traffic management company, and a licensed security program. These measures are to make sure that we have the right people in the right places at the right time. That's... Uh, and that the nearby properties are protected and any inebriated people are identified, controlled, and don't drive, and that the people don't wander or loiter. Last, making a first year festival break even or even profit is a very difficult task. That said, we have reserved some uh, room in our budget in case a neighbors um, really can't be in the area. We'll be doing another door-to-door -door visit about two weeks before the event in which we hope to gauge, visit, and address neighbors' thoughts and concerns. With all that said, we also request an allowance to be made to the Community Standards Bylaw 2019, number 5448. Although we have planned our lineup to go to 10 p.m. on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and 9.30 on Monday, we have learned and have been advised that artists and bands are nearly impossible to predict uh, and keep in time. Since we cannot start any earlier, we kindly request an allowance be made to the Noise Bylaw. It is difficult to gauge the allowance needed. However, festivals nearby, for example, Canada Day, Gone Country, Deer Lake Park, and others, go until 11 p.m. Uh, no one anticipates going that late, but, we would, but it would be essential to have some allowance. I should add that our liquor license only allows us to serve until just before 10 p.m. Moving forward, we kindly um, ask, and we're taking uh, one year at a time, um, doing the best we can this year, and then taking time to assess, analyze, and evaluate from there. We want uh, Somerset and Torchlight to be something the community is proud of, engaged in, um, and unifies around. This is one reason why we're promoting and sharing our proceeds with several charities and organizations, namely the Langley Hospice, the Fort Langley Elementary, the Fort Langley Fine Arts School, uh, Opportunity International, and the Arts Umbrella. Thank you. Thank you. And I have some questions from Council. Council Richter. Yeah, um, I'm actually finding it difficult to understand why you would go from what's in the past been one day events to four day events hmm. on the last weekend of the summer when people are busy with enjoying the end of summer, getting their kids ready to go to school. Like, I think four days is excessive, hmm. honestly. I also think noise for four days until 11 p.m. is excessive. Uh, now, you mentioned a 10-acre field. Yes. Why wouldn't you put your concert down in the 10-acre field and use what's up top in the village for parking? Um, I mean, that would keep the noise away from the residents, and they can enjoy their privacy in their last summer in their homes. Right. Uh, I think that um, the noise will be relatively same if it was down in that field. It is uh, on 23600... Uh, River Road, so it's the farmer's field directly below the fort. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good point, but I think uh, that having it there at the fort is one of our primary, or is one um, of our ideas that uh, brings direction towards the fort. Um, we've partnered with the fort before for the Beer and Food Festival, and it really highlights the fort, and that venue specifically is very special. Um, it's, it's a place that uh, really unites people, it brings people, it shows our history, it brings people to Fort Langley. We want to feature Fort Langley, and uh, I think that having it right there at the grounds of the fort is the best way to do that. Um, and yeah, I, I think that that venue is really, really unique, and uh, I, I will address the four-day question because it is a, it's a valid question. Um, the cost of infrastructure and the uh, ability to run an event at this rate um, is why that we have to, we had to extend to more than one day. Um, if you look at other music festivals around, uh, for example, um, Constellation Festival that's coming up, it's also a multi-day uh, music festival. It's simply because the cost of, of execution is so high that to try to recoup or even come close to going neutral would be nearly impossible. Well, 
I'm sorry to hear that it's what a financial decision over quality of life for the area residents for you, but I still think four days is excessive and there should have been much more community consultation done. And I'm disappointed that you didn't do it. Yeah, just for questions, thank you. Councilor Woodward. Yeah, I just had a couple of questions too. Um, exception to the bylaw, can, the noise bylaw, can you remind me the specifically the exception you're asking for? We're, we're looking for uh, um, an extension of the time. From when, yeah, from 10 till when? Uh, well, sp we suggested 11 p.m. on here, but it is hard to predict. Um, that's based on the other uh, music festivals that are around. Um, for example, Gone Country, they, uh, their gates closed at 11. On 11 p.m. for all four days? Uh, yes, the, the Monday will be uh, probably 30 minutes uh, before that, so 10.30. 10.30 for the Monday? Yeah. Okay, I got one more question here. You, you mentioned you can't start earlier. What, why not? Yeah, so that is in regards to two different aspects. Okay. Um, the first being the, uh, we anticipate it being a very warm weather that weekend. So uh, we don't want our guests to be in the sun all day in the heat of the, of the sun. It's just a, a precaution for uh, health. Um, second is with the artist contracts. So they have very specific times on, on how long they need to play and how much they want to play. Um, we are also running a, uh, a star search uh, on a secondary stage, which will feature local talent, and we want to give enough time for them to play so that we can feature local talent and then also bring world-class talent to the main stage. What time does it start? Uh, our gates open at 4. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Councillor Arneson. Yes, thank you for coming. Um, I had a couple of questions. I'll keep my... Well, anyways, um, I I'm wondering if you have done any kind of um, studies or looked at the decibel levels that you're going to be creating from the speakers. I know that part of your due diligence and mitigation is to point the speakers away from the actual residences, but I'm wondering if you have an awareness about how many decibels it would actually be. I specifically don't know the answer to that question. Um, our our uh, company that we've hired, Collective X, they are running our stage management, and they would have the answers to those questions. I'm sorry, I don't know the decibel level. Oh, that's okay. Um, I'm a child of the 60s, so, you know, so <laughs> buzzing speakers. Um, I have a question. I'm not sure if this has been covered anywhere else, but um, in terms of the policing costs and things that are going to be going on on site in terms of security, is that something you're wholly responsible for? Um, so far, yes, from my understanding. Uh, we have submitted our traffic uh, application today, so that will um, tell us a little bit about what we need to do for our policing. Um, as far as our uh, security goes, we have uh, full responsibility for the cost of the uh, guard tech security company. Okay, and just one final thought. Do you have any kind of bond or anything like that with the township in the event that something untoward happens that has not been predicted? so that we won't have to cover any extraordinary costs. Uh, I'm not totally sure about that, but we can. that will be something that we'll okay, work Okay, thank on. you. Mm -hmm. you Councillor Whitmarsh. Yeah, just a quick question. Thanks for coming. Um, you mentioned earlier in, uh, about a shuttle service, and uh, can you just expand a little bit upon what the, uh, on the shuttle service, how it works, and is there a cost to patrons for using that service? Yeah, so we will be operating from primarily Carvolf um, directly to Fort Langley starting at uh, 3.30. So uh, that's when our in buses will come, and we'll have uh, two full school buses, 76 passenger school buses, and um, uh, it, will be, it will be ticketed. So we will charge as little as we can to try to minimize our risk on the shuttle service, but we anticipate trying to, um, anyone that would like to take transit or would like to park uh, further away from Port Langley, we would like to give them an option to do that. And so Carvolf is one of the options. There were some other options you mentioned? Yeah, so around Colossus, and then for the Monday, we're working with Trinity Western um, with a primarily a lot of uh, students coming from Trinity Western. So we, we decided that our uh, shuttle service should be based out of Trinity Western, and they've offered to uh, host some of our cars for parking. I see. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I don't see any other questions. Thank you very much for thank you. presenting. Thanks. Okay, next uh, delegation is um, Matt Joyce. Mr. Matt Joyce. Thank you, Your Worship. I'm just uh, going to find the thing here. Is it ready? I'll start the timer. Okay, uh, 
Good evening, uh, Your Worship and Council. My name is actually Chris McMillan. Uh, Matt Joyce is behind me. Matt Joyce booked this space for the delegation, and there was a mistake on the agenda. I've got my name. Uh, <clears throat> didn't get my name. Uh, my name is Chris McMillan. I'm a biologist from a company called Sartor Environmental, and I've been, um, I'm very pleased to be here on delegation for the uh, pr property owner at 238618th Avenue, which is um, Gaylene Sawchuck. She's uh, in the midst of a soil deposit application. So the objectives of her project are basically to um, improve soil conditions on her property so that she can grow hay. She is a, a horse person. I should mention that Galen wanted to be here speaking today, but unfortunately her um, her mother is in uh, the last days of her life here, and she's uh, in hospice. So I, I got asked to come in last minute and present this for her. Um, she's a horse person. She raises championship horses and uh, boards horses at her property, and she uh, right now is having a hard time growing enough hay to sustain her operation. And uh, she has a lot of property down there, and just not enough hay. So she is uh, hoping to import some better drain draining soils. <clears throat> um, the project description is uh, fairly basic. She intends to uh, strip the topsoil that's on the property in the northern third of the property. It's probably about seven acres. And then to import some locally sourced uh, better draining soils. Um, and uh, fill elevations are about zero to a meter and a half. Uh, no fills proposed within three meters of any of her property lines. No fills proposed within 30 meters of any local water courses. And no clearing is required for this work. Uh, I should mention that there's no wasting of topsoil proposed with this application, and uh, all works will be done in keeping with uh, typical terms of permitting with uh, sediment erosion control, dust and control, uh, noise control, and screening of import soils for invasive species. So when we embarked on the public particip participation process, this is really picking up well. Yeah, I'm too close, yeah. So no, can you hear me close. if I'm here? It really yeah. picks up okay, well. thank you. Yeah. Um, when she embarked on this process, we kind of went on the uh, trying to bin uh, major st uh, stakeholder concerns that would be with the application. And uh, uh, we could have came up with three uh, major topics, uh, environmentally sensitive water courses that are mapped on the property, trucking disturbance to local farm animals and uh, local equestrian activity, and uh, some endangered wildlife that's present in the Little Campbell River area. So I'll start by talking about sensitive water courses here. Um, this is a, a photo of, uh, of uh, the GIS service that Langley produces. This is um, the property here. And here is our proposed fill area. Uh, you'll see here that there's some gazetted water courses on the property. If you guys are familiar with the, um, uh, the coding of streams in Township of Langley, these amber-coded streams indicate streams that are uh, seasonally fish-bearing. So it's, this would be overwintering habitat or potential overwintering habitat for um, trout and uh, salmon. But uh, this ditch has already been infilled, and it has been infilled legally uh, through a process with the uh, uh, provincial government under a Water Sustainability Act approval. And with that came expansion of a wetland that's on the property and compensation. And so uh, this uh, should not be a discussion item on, the app on this application. Township of Langley was also part of that process for smaller fill permitting under 600 meters. I won't talk much about, but more to it, but here's a picture of the filled water course uh, prior to infill and uh, a before and after photo of the compensation habitat that's been constructed on the property. And uh, the property owner is a, a good environmental steward. They've, they've worked a lot with the aquatic habitat that's on their property voluntarily. Beyond that, we uh, looked at trucking route considerations and trying to be considerate of the um, uh, local residents and uh, neighborhood noise levels and equestrian activity, as well as avoiding some sensitive habitat for endangered species in the area. I'll start with uh, looking at the trucking routes and equestrian activity. Here's the subject property right here. And you can see there's uh, some brown lines. This is also from the Township of Langley uh, GIS service. These brown lines indicate uh, horse trails. And uh, you'll see that 8th Avenue serves as sort of an east-west connector between sorry, the Campbell River Trail Network and the Jackman, Jackman Creek uh, Trail Network. These are high-use areas. But 8th Avenue isn't actually a horse trail, it's just a road. It's just a, a traffic calm area that horses can connect between these two areas. Also across the street is another uh, equestrian center that has a lot of horse work. And so um, the uh, Galen, the property owner, has sort of devised a, a trucking route that uses all major, major streets to keep noise levels down and to minimize impacts with uh, horse trail networks, as well as some alternative networks that can be used wholly or solely <clears throat> to avoid uh, this area and keep it up to a 200 meter. Uh, impact. Beyond that, we looked, here's the subject property again, a little harder to see on there, but uh, we were uh, concerned about painted turtle habitat in this area. Painted turtle is an uh, endangered species, 
And again, here's our preferred route and alternate routes. We can see we purposely avoided importing soil for along 232nd and south from 8th Avenue because of this impact area, trying to avoid having um, uh, trucks uh, have run-ins with Painted Turtle. So in conclusion, uh, the property, this project is aimed solely at improving agricultural capacity and, and improving the ability to farm the land under, the, under provincial uh, rights for farming. The fill works don't overlap any aquatic sensitive habitat and trucking routes have been um, designed to present, prevent disturbance to local community activities and local wildlife. And here we have some brood mares and uh, some foals that are currently on the property and kind of hungry. So, Yeah, hey, well, thank you very much. Uh, is there any questions from council? I don't see any, so thank you very much for your presentation. Can okay, we move on to reports to council? And coincidentally, the first one is sole deposit application for property at 23861 8th Avenue. And uh, there is a motion not to refer uh, that we do have. Okay, is there a seconder? And Council Davis seconds it. So on the recommendation, any discussion? Councilor Long? Okay, so we're going with the recommendation, but I'm just trying to do some calculating here. I don't have a napkin to do it on the back of, but it, the of the ones that were uh, responding, so we had 49 responses and 29 were in support. So that percentage is what? 29, 29 of 49 people were in 59 favor. 59 or 57, what was it? Mr. Seffi, sorry, was it 50, uh, Eric, you must know the answer. 59% of those that responded were in support. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, 59% were in support of those that responded. Oh, oh, okay. So that is that is that fifty nine percent is of the responded, or is of the total that was sent out? It must be responded. I guess. Of those that responded, yeah. So there was substantially more that didn't respond that was sent out. Okay. Yeah. So I think we have a bit of a, a flaw in this whole process, and I think we've talked about that a little bit. So yeah. I mean, um, so certainly. So I, I guess I I, su I think with fifty nine percent in favor, uh, I, I would probably support the. Application, but the motion is the opposite. That's right. So we'd have to deal with this. If, it, if this motion passes, then that's the end of it. If it doesn't pass, an alternative motion could be could be um, made considered. Yeah, Councilor Ferguson. It's always a challenge these ones because 93 people did not respond at all. You know, and they got 49 that responded. It just it, it used to be a time I don't know when, and it's on something, not necessarily these. That if somebody didn't respond for something, maybe it was a water problem. I don't know what it was going way back. Is that it was concerned, considered in the affirmative? But uh, I know that that's not the way these work. But it does give council an opportunity to look at it and say, "Gee, that's kind of kind of odd." If say you know, if only 10% didn't respond, or but just such a high number didn't respond, and they're so close, it, you know, it almost feels as if the, we should take a second look at it. Thank you. Thank you, Council Kunst. Yeah, um, I agree. The 93 people that didn't respond, um, does that mean that they, they, not that they don't care, but I guess it's not a big a de enough deal for them. Um, I feel like these people are wanting to grow hay for their horses. And, um, you know, if we can encourage farming and uh, make it a little bit easier for people, horses are expensive. And, and if we can help them out to, uh, you know, help pay the bills to keep their horses, then I'm going to be supporting this. Thank you. That's Whitmarsh. Yeah, I guess I find uh, these are a bit of a challenge as well. I know that we, you know, recently went through and, and changed this uh, bylaw. And, and yet, you know, when I, when I look at it here, we have only a, just over a third of the people responded. Uh, so two thirds didn't respond at all. We don't know whether they didn't respond because they were upset with it and wanted to make sure it didn't happen. But usually, if that's the case, they probably would have responded. It's hard to know. Um, and and the number's close. And you know, and we're, what we're trying to do here is improve agriculture, improve farming. And what we're seeing here is something that's actually doing that. And so we can stick to the the the, the bylaw exactly as is. And maybe we need to revisit it again. But somehow, it just seems strange to me that we would turn down something that actually is in support of farming. And we're going to turn it down because it didn't quite reach uh, a number um, on a piece of paper. And and so for me, um, you know, I think I think we should uh, I think we should move forward and uh, improve farming. Thank you, Councillor Richter. Well, we've had a lot of these over the years, and they've caused a lot of problems. Um, people who claim that they're bringing soil in in order to improve farming when it was really just a stockpile soil, and. Um, we had a very significant uh, public uh, review process with a, with a committee. 
they're the ones that recommended 80% approval rate because of the upset that has occurred to neighbors by all these truckloads. We reduced the 80% down to 67%. Now we're saying, oh, well, 59% is good enough. Well, no, I'm sorry, 59% is not good enough. If the policy is wrong, the policy has to change. But right now, the policy says 67%. And um, I, I mean, why even have a policy if we're not going to follow it? Uh, the other concern that I have is uh, with regards to the proximity uh, to fish-bearing streams. And we've seen in applications in the past how the water table ends up being uh, change significantly as a result of fill activity, creates drainage issues for various different neighbors. So I'm, I'm thinking they didn't meet the threshold. End of discussion. Thank you. Councillor Anderson. Um, yes, thank you, Worship. Um, I think that we need to really, really look at these in great detail. And while I understand the right to farm, and I understand that there is a compelling reason from the proponent's point of view as to why they want to bring in this fill, I do think we have to look at the balancing of the interest. And the balancing of the interest is to look at the other things that could potentially happen to the neighborhood, to the roadways, to people's wells, etc. And doing all due diligence uh, nonetheless means that this fill is coming from somewhere else. It's going to use our roadways. It's going to appear where geologically it was not deposited. And there are all sorts of things. Um, it, it always sounds really good in the abstract that everybody's going to review the kind of soil that is and look and every load and make a survey, make sure there's no weeds in it. But the bottom line is, if we are going to just disregard our council uh, standard of bylaws that we put in place, then either one of two things can happen. We have to just say we'll give everything a pass, and because we have the discretion to say that we can do that, or we're going to have to revisit it. But I don't think on a case-by-case -case basis we should be looking at this and say, oh, well, this is close enough. To me, this is not close enough. Because when I look at what the concerns are, I think that they are real concerns. And if our policy is wrong, then I think it's our job as elected officials to change it. So I'm going to be supporting the council's, uh, sorry, the staff recommendation. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, uh, I see no further discussion. So the motion is um, to not refer. So I'm going to call the question on F F1. And uh, the motion fails with uh, Councillor Ferguson, Councillor Whitmarsh, Councillor Kuntz, Mayor Froze, Councillor Long opposed. So I now entertain a motion um, in the affirmative that uh, we refer the soil deposit applications there. Well, Councillor Whitmarsh moves there, seconder. Councillor Kuntz, any further discussion? Discussion, Councillor Woodward? Yeah, I didn't want to make, you know, assume that the motion was going to fail, but, um, you know, I think that, just say it again, that if there's going to be a 5-4 vote on these uh, on this council for the next three years, to please have one of the people that is ignoring the policy to bring forward a notice of motion to amend the policy. Thank you. Thank you. I, I agree with you. I think uh, we should be looking at that. Councillor Long. Well, I interpret the policy to be this. If you get 67%, it's a slam dunk. It's kind of like cell towers. But if you get over 50%, I think then council has to get involved. If you get less than 50%, which happened before, then I couldn't support it. That's the way I look at it. Thank you. But I think that uh, either way, Your Worship, that the report should be reworded and it shouldn't, rather than staff making that determination, which is done here, I think they should be using the word that council consider, right? And here's the information by which you consider it. That thank would you. kind of fix it rather than saying that the council not refer it. Yeah. However, thank you. Uh, but that is a policy, and, and staff are uh, following the policy. And certainly, uh, it is a policy. A, a council can look at the totality of, of the presentation, what's happening here, and try and see through that this isn't an abuse, uh, that they are actually trying to farm it. So that is up to council. But certainly, I don't know, Mr. Back, and you can take that um, information back and discuss with staff. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, I'm going to call the question on F1. And that is to approve, to send to. And this is. And it carries with Councillor Richter, Councillor Woodward, Councillor Arneson, Councillor Davis opposed. Move on to F2, permissive ex exemptions from property taxation. Uh, can I have a motion, please? Councillor Long, second by Councillor Arneson. Discussion on F2. Seeing none, I'm calling the question on F2. 
It carries unanimously. F3 is uh, filming fee revenues and cost recovery report. So Councilor Ferguson moves. Councilor Long seconds. Discussion on F3. Councilor Arneson. Yes, thank you, Worship. Um, I actually just wanted to thank Ms. Gavka, who I notice is in the room, to uh, thank her very much for this report. And just to comment, uh, I think it has to do with actually um, the new policy that's in place, but from 2018 to 2019, uh, from January to June, the film revenues have doubled. And just the hopes that I know that we are consistently looking at other communities and what's being charged and what kind of remuneration we get, but just uh, to make sure that we continue to get fair market value for our TOL filming venues. But thank you for the report. Thank you. I see no further discussion on F3. I'll call a question. It carries unanimously. And if I could have a motion to receive uh, G1. Okay. Councillor Kuntz, second by Councillor, was it Long? Uh, Councillor Long. Discussion on G1. Seeing none, I'll call the question on G1. Carries unanimously. And I'm going to put Councillor Arneson on as she has a notice of motion. Councillor Arneson. In the interest of time, if council's okay with this, because we've already considered it, but um, it basically says, the bottom line is, therefore be it resolved that Langley Township Council write to the Honorable Rob Fleming, Minister of Education, requesting that the province of British Columbia restore funding for libraries to meet current requirements by adding $6 million to the 2020 budget. And so I'd just like to speak to this, if I get a seconder. Second by Councillor Richter. Councillor Arneson, go ahead. Did it go off? Oh. I did that. Oh, there you go. Sorry, thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you, Worship. Uh, I will be brief. Uh, I think it's fairly self-evident that if there is an organization or an operation that receives very limited uh, funding, that it's going to be a challenge to try and maintain itself as the course of time goes forward and everything else continues in price. So this motion was drafted with the idea that it's just an overall advocacy. I know Council has seen recent correspondence. This was actually spearheaded by by the, um, the Library's Trustee Association of British Columbia. So the bottom line is that, that there's money missing from our bottom line. In effect, the request is for library funding to be increased to be to, be to the total of $20 million. So currently it's remained stagnant for about a decade at $14 million. So it's just a request from the province to increase funding so that we can uh, provide adequate primary library services across the province. Thank you. Any uh, discussion from Council? Seeing none, we'll call the question on I-1. And the motion carries unanimously. Is there any other business? Councilor Richter. I have two notices of motion for our next regular afternoon meeting. Whereas Council is considering many different new expenditures to meet the service needs of this growing community, whereas many of these expenditures will be very expensive. Therefore, be it resolved that Council asks staff to develop and bring forward a strategic borrowing plan, short, medium, and long term, as part of the budget 2020 process, be it further resolved that this strategic borrowing plan include a list of prioritized expenditures for Council's consideration. My second notice of motion, whereas some residents miss the property tax deadline for unavoidable health reasons, but are still required by provincial law to pay a financial penalty for late tax payment, whereas most other lower mainland jurisdictions have moved to a two 5% penalties model, where a 5% penalty is imposed for the first 30 days after the property tax deadline, with the second 5% penalty implemented after that, and whereas the Township of Langley currently has a full 10% penalty effective immediately after the tax deadline, which creates a financial burden on sick and elderly residents, therefore be it resolved that Council asks staff to bring forward a report and any necessary bylaw changes to implement the two 5% penalties model in the Township of Langley to be effective for the 2020 tax year. Thank you. Is there any other business? Seeing none, motion terminated. Terminate. Councillor Davis moves it. Second by Councillor Long, who's recovering from a heart attack. All those in favour? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. The meeting is now adjourned.